11. All right, Tristan, how would you advise curbing addiction to our phones? Do you, do you use apps? Well, that's, of course you use apps. Let me answer. Um, one thing I've tried recently, if you make your phone grayscale, actually, it takes make out... It what? Grayscale, so uh, take mean? the color out of your screen. So if you oh. go to the settings, you can take the color out. For me, I've noticed it actually makes a big difference in how addicted I am. Um, Huh. Just because the colorful rewards are like reinforcing this this system of I mean the red the red circle for example That's part of this addictive element. So when you take that out turn off notifications is very simple I highly recommend that but grayscale actually for me has helped quite a bit. Jesus people are such fucking chimps aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Evolution 1.0 all it's the way so down. It's easy to <laughs> freaking manipulate. Gee, that's depressing. Red Jim, red would red you red still red advocate a third-party candidate for president? Uh, I think our system needs something different. This thing isn't working. I, I, actually, I thought Ben Sass was a really, really uh, good guest for you. And he's like one of the few people... I like him. Yeah. ...in there that's talking differently, thinking differently. And I think, like, listen, the, the, the politics... The thing where Trump could have been good was that the place needed something big. It needed an earthquake. Washington is, is basically ungovernable, except for when you have all-party rule. And so the only time anything's gotten done in the last 12 years is the two years when Bush had all-party rule, two years when Obama had all-party rule, and now Republicans are blowing it because they have all Republican rule, but they're not actually doing much with it. And so I think that if something doesn't change, because it's not just that repetitiveness, the addiction, it's the fact that what Facebook and social media has done is it just gives you a bunch of people that will say whatever dumb thing you say, that's great, that's great, I got a thousand fans, a thousand followers. You get more incentives to be as yeah. dumb as you can possibly be. <laughs> so true. really turning all human beings into rats. I mean, it's right. Crazy. No, but you're right. I mean, in the old days of the John Birch Society, you had to go door to door with pamphlets and get people to come to your Bund meeting or whatever. And yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Now you just follow the red button. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, will Trump block Comey from testifying? Can yeah. he? Well, le legally, they can. Yeah, he's uh, testifying Thursday, right? Right. Okay. The, 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 le legally, they can try to throw up impediments about executive privilege. But if he does, now, you know, we've, I've been wrong a thousand times about the politics of Donald Trump. But if he does that, I think there is a nuclear explosion on the Hill. And I think even the Republicans at that point say, this is unacceptable. Jim Comey needs to tell a story in public or what? else Donald Trump's credibility I can, goes I can tell you tonight they're seriously thinking about executive privilege for yep. them. The problem is that Comey can just go hold a press conference. He might keep him right. from testifying, right. but he's a free man. He yep. can speak. Mm. And, and will he? I mean, what, what are we expecting? Sure, I, I cannot wait for this. He, he I seems very motivated to tell his side of the story. I mean, this right. is his, this is his yeah. big moment. Right. And I think he already has. I mean, to a great extent, he's already told the story. This is what Donald Trump told me to do. I wrote memos that, 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 that the in, contemporaneous memos that said, here's what he told me. Right. That's the story. He's going to reiterate that story, add a little bit of texture, but we already know it, so he's going to say it again. Is he going to quote from his... Is he sure. going to actually bring the memos? I sure. want more memos. This is, I think we should have yeah. more memos. Yeah. I want him to bring them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what did you think, Rebecca, of the recent tension in the Democratic Party over whether every supported candidate should have the same pro-choice position? Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, I think that we have this conversation every single time a Democrat loses, and that the conversation... I mean, this, is, this was the, the thing we did after the 2004 election. Rahm Emanuel decided we could get the House by ditching abortion and ditching reproductive rights as a requirement. Now, there are lots of issues that, you know, we could bring right-leaning Americans in on if we just jettison them, but it always seems to be reproductive rights that uh, off, not exclusively the men, but often the men who lead the Democratic Party yeah. or want to re-envision it, that's the first thing they imagine we can go. Now, it's also based on really faulty polling. It used to be they used to poll America one way and say, do you believe in abortion? And half the people said yes and half the people said no, and it was like, oh, we're irrevocably dis divided. But what there has been in the past couple years, and I recommend that these guys actually look at these polls, are new ways of doing polls where you first ask, are you personally in favor of abortion? And then you get people oh. saying no. And then the follow-up is, but do you want to regulate it? And when you you ask the questions like that, you get seven out of ten who want legal abortion, who want some measure of I, access to abortion, even in Kansas, even in Nebraska, that there's really extensive polling on that. And none of these guys seem to have read this. this is actually one of the more popular I've issues. I've seen Republican politicians be contradictory in the same sentence. I saw, oh, yeah. Her, remember Herman Cain? <laughs> Herman Cain was asked about, it was hysterical. It was like, the government should not be in our lives unless it's my daughter. 
Right. <laughs> right. Right. You know, Dan Quayle, McCain same thing. McCain says that McCain yeah, was the same way. It would be a choice that we make as a family. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Which world leader now best represents liberal values? Well, uh, apparently we've, we've been a big brouhaha with Germany because <laughs> Angela Merkel did not kiss his ass. So Germany, very bad. <laughs> very bad. <laughs> That's that's where we are. If you don't you do the flattery bit with him, very bad. Your country's very bad. <laughs> but it does look like she's, you know, the leader of the free world well, now. Where's to Trudeau? A lot of people. Trudeau. Trudeau. Well, you know? Canada's a small, not yeah, powerful. Well, okay, you're saying I, not a world I, leader. You know, hey, I, I like, he's love, our neighbor. No, I, I love <laughs> Canada, but you know, it's it's he, not a. But he's been good on a whole bunch. Of, and yes. I like the tweet he sent out about about climate change. Yeah. Yeah. And to Rebecca's point earlier, yeah. he said specifically, we regret that the federal government right. is no longer there, basically saying everybody else, you know, mayors, governors, corporations, come work with us. Canada, 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 I think Canada may be too nice to be legal. Right. <laughs> I mean, right. Germany has a history yeah. of being a little well, tough. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, well. Right. Getting a little scared here. <laughs> no, they've channeled it in a better direction. Right. That's yeah. all I'm saying. <laughs> Let's hope so. No, well, we know they have. Come on, at least for now. Uh, <laughs> Elliot, do you think that more underdog Democratic candidates in traditionally red districts can win, like Christine Pellegrino did in Long Island last month? Absolutely. Oh, I, I, because well, the, the energy in the Democratic base is real. Look, I, I've never believed when a candidate says, I'm going to get people to the polls who haven't voted before, I said, OK, you're a loser, because that's not going to happen. Right now, I actually think that can happen. The energy out there is palpable. The desire to get rid of Trump, to get rid of Paul Ryan, to get rid of Mitch McConnell, there's no question in my mind we can actually but, win big in 18. OK. I, I mean, if we don't, yeah. it's yeah. all up. Yeah. But, you know, as I was saying a minute ago, we haven't done that. It, yeah, hasn't, be, be, it be, hasn't really happened. Because we, we need the backbone that you were articulating. We, you know, the no wimpiness, just go out and fight. And, and also, what I was asking the senator from Nebraska about, why are these places in the country, Montana, you know, you can assault somebody the day before the election, Nebraska, where I, I just cannot imagine under any circumstance a Democrat winning. Why are Democrats that, where I do think they actually think they would rather elect a Russian? Then they think the Russians are less of a threat than Democrats and liberals. I really think half the country believes that. P part of it is, and I hate, I, I hate to blame the media, so I'm not going to blame them, but I think part of it is 20 to 30 years of the media being so conservative in certain parts of the country that the Democratic view doesn't get heard. Really? Because yeah. it's so funny, because yeah. they would say the, the media say the is liberal. They, I mean, and Jim may disagree with me, you're in the media, but that, that's my view. No, I mean, Montana, they elected a Democrat. I think that... Uh, right. So it, it, they are electable. You know, a Democrat could win, but it does go down to, and this is a big choice. It, it, people talk about 18. In the, the, 2006, Rahm Emanuel did have that strategy of trying to find people that fit in individual districts. So he had a lot of moderate Democrats that helped win back the House. The question this time is, when you look, there's fewer seats that are authentically winnable now than there would have been 12 years ago because of redistricting, because we all moved away from people we don't like, but they're icky, so we move next to people that we do. The question is, can you then find candidates candidates that fit those districts. And that's still a very much an open question right now for Democrats. That would be the thing if you talk to Rahm, if you have him on your show, he would say worries him the most right now, that he worries that the party will reject people that could win in those seats. Okay. Thank you, panel. Very entertaining. Thank you, audience. Thank you. Appreciate you coming out and helping us.